Hello and welcome to MM Design. My name is Maria and today we're going to be talking about different types of shows, what they're all about, why do we need so many, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Before we get into this video, we have a sponsor today, and it's Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, develop existing passions, and get lost in creativity. You can find many classes uh, for any kind of interest. There are classes for productivity uh, to bring out your inner creative self. There's also classes that actually teach you things, such as I don't know, draw things, make videos, make content, uh, even some styling classes. A class that I'm particularly very interested in taking myself is Productivity for Creatives. Build your system that brings out your best. That is taught by Thomas Frank. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there is no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow whatever your creativity takes you and it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. For the first 1,000 people to hit that link down below, you'll get a free trial of Skillshare. Just make sure to check that out. It's free. Try it. Why do we need so many different shows? What are they? Like, what's going on? Let's just dive in, go maybe somewhere down into the history and discuss how it all began. So before brands and before this and that, basically everybody made their own clothes, right? Okay, okay. So in the 17th century, we had more like courtiers who just people who sew and they would sew different garments particularly for a person. So a person would come in, say, I want this and this and that, they'll make it for them. In the 18th century, we see uh, a big shift off to already made wardrobe. Men's fashion became very, very popular. And in the 19th century, haute couture comes into place. Word couture is basically a word for sewing in French. Haute couture is high sewing, so that means very delicate, very extravagant, very high ability of sewing. Extreme attention to detail or one-of-a-kind kind of sewing. Haute couture, high sewing, just couture, just sewing. We no longer have individual dress for individual lady. We have more like a style of a dress that can be ordered for you for them to make that style. Charles Frederick Walls produced dresses without commission and ladies would look at the design and choose the favored ones. In this time a retail revolution hit and there were more ready-to-wear items out. Something that didn't need to be so fitted, uh, something a little bit looser, men's suits, you could just come into the store and buy something already made. While all of the dresses beforehand had to be very tight, they would take them in and out depending on how the weight gain of a woman was. It was very expensive to create a different dress. Mostly they changed a ribbon or the color of the details around it. So it was the same dress, only little details would change. Back to food couture. It is governmentally regulated. There's a regulating committee determining which fashion houses are eligible to be the true hood couture. Hood couture -er. rur, rur, rur. So that means that not everybody could create a hood couture. It's kind of like a brand, like a stamp of approval that this designer is good enough to make it. Why are they so expensive? Well, average time spent on a hood couture item would be 300 hours. Yes, up to maximum of seven or 800 hours. Like, oh my gosh. While ready to wear items take about 50 to 100 hours. Just one, one. You can afford it, maybe like 1% or maybe 10% not 1%. 1%. Only 2,000 people worldwide annually purchase food couture. Why is it important? Food couture is a way for designers to experiment. It is 
sometimes can be a breakthrough into fashion. We can't just say that haute couture doesn't matter because it's unattainable. We don't need to attain everything or else we would not appreciate it as much. If we had like money growing on trees, we wouldn't care about it. We wouldn't have to work. But since we need to try to get it, try to get that money, it's hard for everybody. It is valued. And of course, many beautiful masterpieces like paintings, we can't buy, I don't know, Mona Lisa, but we can look at it and appreciate it for what it is. And this is the same way about haute couture. What do you need to do to be eligible to be a haute couture kind of company? What can you do? What do you need to do in order to have that stamp of approval and that stamp of approval needs to be approved yearly so every single year you need to do this firstly designers must be able to get in orders from private clients something custom have an atelier in paris who, who employ at least 15 full-time staff present at least 50 original looks each season, both day and evening garments, as well as 35 looks for the haute couture shows twice a year. Who has time for that? Honestly, like, it's just mind blowing. Okay, okay. Usually the two shows are in January and July. In these shows, designers can show off their ability, their creative skills, convey important issues, experiment, they're even t thought of as a performance where the clothes themselves are kind of like an actor. To create a haute couture collection, a designer needs to receive an official permission from the Syndical Chamber of Haute Couture Paris. And once again, haute couture is more of an art form than a f than fashion. Um, or fas fashion is an art form. So haute couture is more of an art form in a fashion kind of a bubble. So whenever I see all of those photos of people freaking out, how in the world are we supposed to wear this? It's not supposed to be worn. It's supposed to be appreciated. There is a deeper meaning behind it and you're just not getting it. <laughs> so sorry. Next time you're, you're watching a hood couture show, just appreciate for what it is. You don't need to look at the price tag just because probably we will never get anything like that unless you are actually really good at sewing and maybe you'll be able to put in a 700 hours of work into one item of clothing probably not but it definitely inspires the ready to wear collections so what is ready to wear it's pieces of high-end garments that are already sewn in a couple of sizes and people can actually go into the store and buy it right off the rack. So for ready to wear, we have fall winter series where it kind of covers July to December. And we have the spring summer collection, which usually covers the other half of the year, <laughs> January to June. If you're enjoying this content so far, please consider to like this video and subscribe to this channel. It would mean a lot. Thank you. We also have a pre-fall and cruise shows what are they you might ask so beforehand when people actually went on a cruise all the time they would put out these cruise shows where they would have these elegant dresses that you could wear on the boat with a luxurious large brim hat and maybe some feathers something super duper like extravagant that you would wear out Right now it's a little bit different and you would say, but Maria, why are there some like puffers on those shows? Well, some people decide not to go to the hot countries. Some people actually go skiing during their vacation. And that is why the designers started to add more warm items into their collection. So they would not miss out on that potential buyer. So the resort collection is brought to us around June. It can be a smaller show or maybe just a lookbook. They're not as luxurious as the fashion week items and as well as the pre-fall which is around in december time and those also come in either a small fashion show or a lookbook why do we need that resort collection and etc right now with the 
a huge amount of overturn of fashion, a brand does not come out with those, they become more irrelevant. A lot of money comes from those mid shows just because they have a lot of really wearable, very consumer friendly items. Resort cruise pre-fall or pre-spring, they're kind of all the same thing. Resort cruise or pre-spring or holiday come after fall or winter clothes have gone on sale, but before spring and summer clothes come onto the sale floor. Resort starts mid-November, around Thanksgiving and Christmas time, and ends up on the sales floor for much longer without going on sale than just the regular fall-winter items. More and more fashion houses are quitting that calendar just because of creative stress. Coming out with so many different looks with for su in such a short time wears down a lot of creativity. That's why a lot of the creatives behind each brand kind of quit or move to another brand just to kind of keep those juices going, get something new, creatively interesting item, thing, whatever. So when are those shows that we we're talking about? The men's shows and the Hood Couture comes in January and in June. Bridal shows come in April. There are some resort shows in May, February, March and September, October mark fashion weeks of the major fashion capitals, um, which are New York Fashion Week, London Fashion Week, Milan Fashion Week, and Paris Fashion Week. Mass market street style. What happens is after all the shows, people there watching the shows take notes, see what they like, then they all create their own kind of a fast fashion, something with cheaper materials that may, that is done much faster in a much br broader volume, and they sell it to the public. This is what most of us can afford, and uh, really sadly, this is also very bad for the environment. I try to do my best at shopping in thrift stores. Sometimes it's just not possible for sizes and for just you know, you need to rely on everybody else's like style who, who was before <laughs> and tr hope that they had it good, like good. <laughs> it, it, it is very hard to find anything nice in a thrift store, at least in my location. Maybe if you're like, if you live in LA, there's like plenty of things just because everybody seems to like be all trendy and stuff. And another one, street style. So yes, designers also take inspiration from the street style world. There are photographers that are devoted only to going out and photographing the style of people, what they're wearing. And that comes back to the brands as well. And they decide what to make, what to drop, what color will sell. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully it kind of gave you a better idea about all the different kind of shows that are going on. Once again, thank you very much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. First a thousand subscribers to hit that link down below will get a free trial, so might as well do that now. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider to like it and maybe subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. I hope you guys have a great day. Stay classy. Bye.